UTMB Health, working together to work wonders. Hi, my name is Dr. Scott Parazinski. I'm Director and Chief Medical Officer of the Center for Polar Medical Operations at UTMB Health here in Galveston, Texas. We oversee all of the medical care for the National Science Foundation on Antarctica, uh, which involves the medical screening, uh, the on-ice care, the uh, hiring of the health care providers on the ice, the provisioning of the, the various stations uh, on the continent, all in support of uh, the scientific mission of uh, the NSF in, uh, in polar regions. So each season, uh, each summer season, uh, we can have upwards of 2,000 people on the continent. Uh, scientists, uh, engineers, technicians, everything that you need to operate and live in a city here in the U.S., energy production, food production, uh, obviously health care provision uh, to enable scientists to go out into the field to collect meteorites, to study global environmental change, to do marine biology. It's a very complex endeavor. It's very challenging to deliver health care thousands and thousands of miles away, especially when we don't have operating rooms and ICUs and emergency departments uh, in these remote and austere environments. So we, what we use is uh, telemedicine and uh, telementoring. So we have a great expertise at UTMB uh, delivering uh, uh, clinical counsel uh, from afar. So we have assets that allow us to uh, basically deliver our uh, best uh, clinical consultants to the ICE so that the doctors there can uh, have two-way dialogue, uh, examine the patients from afar, and, and give uh, the best medical advice possible. Well, it's, it's actually quite challenging to uh, screen for Antarctic deployment because we don't have the advanced medical care that we, we take for granted here in the Northern Hemisphere. So we, we try and make sure that uh, folks that are deploying to the ICE are generally healthy. We've had people in their uh, late teens uh, go as well as people well into their 70s. Uh, of course, the older you get, the more likely you're going to accumulate medical problems. Uh, so it's still possible if you have, uh, you know, moderate medical conditions that are medically well controlled or you've had diagnostic procedures that give us confidence that you're going to uh, be safe going to the ice. The big challenge, of course, is going to the, uh, Antarctica during the austral winter because we have very little ability to medically evacuate a person during those months. So um, it's much more stringent uh, getting a person to Antarctica during the wintertime. If you have uh, uh, cardiac issues, uh, uh, severe diabetes, uh, uncontrolled high blood pressure, uh, something that might require surgical care in the uh, upcoming months, uh, those, are, those would be disqualifying. Uh, but we have people that uh, have um, had managed medical care down there and, and done extremely well. At the South Pole Station or any of our stations uh, would look very similar to what you would walk into uh, at an urgent care center here in the U.S. Uh, we have the ability to deliver, for brief periods of time, intensive care. Uh, we really don't have great capability to do surgery in this environment. We'd like to get a person off of the ice if they really needed to have surgery. But we have very skilled healthcare providers, doctors and uh, nurse practitioners and phys physician assistants and other technicians that help us. So uh, it, it would look very uh, familiar and comfortable to you as you walked in, but if you needed really uh, advanced levels of care, we'd want to get you on a, a, medically, a medical evacuation plane back to probably Christchurch, New Zealand, which is our closest uh, port of call. It is a little ironic that uh, polar medical operations are based here at the most tropical, uh, you know, port of call in the United States, but uh, because we have this great expertise in working in extreme environments, it, it really does make sense, especially with the telemedicine. But uh, common things occur commonly, so slips, trips, falls, colds, runny noses, coughs, those are the kinds of things we see most often, but also it's, uh, it's an industrial environment, it's very cold and windy. Uh, so, you know, orthopedic issues are probably a little bit more prevalent than, uh, you know, walking down the strand here in, in Galveston. Also, there's a risk of, uh, you know, frostbite, frost nip. Um, the South Pole is actually located at 11,000 feet, so altitude illness, acute mountain sickness, and pulmonary and cerebral edema are a real risk. So there are some unique factors that, uh, you know, certainly can affect our, our polar explorers.